I'm sure you've seen a million burgers from Bob's Burgers. They're very good. But this one hits different. Whoa, that's weird. See, a lot of Bob's Burgers are in this handy little book. Lots of people have gotten it and made them. Yeah, that's what they were going for. But this one's different. This one is special. I feel like the people watching this can appreciate that. Some people just don't get it. Because that's what Harry Potter is all about. Feeling out of place, feeling like you were meant for something more, and then finding out your feelings were right all along. My world is crumbling around me! The phenomenon of Harry Potter is more than just a book about a magic kid. You know we don't have books. It touches on an inherent desire we all have to be special and to fulfill a greater purpose. And that, of course, is why we're making a hamburger. Wait, what? Sorry, I had to segue. That was, that, that was a bad segue. I'm pretty sure that was a bad segue. This is a special burger because this isn't in the book. This was a burger of the day at Bob's Burgers in this episode. So I thought, whoa, that sounds epic. We have to make that. But what on earth is it? Nobody knows. So I had to create it. So if the burger is called the Leaky Cauldron, I think it needs to fit a few criteria. Number one, has leaks. Number two, looks like a cauldron. Number three, open to interpretation, but somewhat Harry Potter themed since the Leaky Cauldron is obviously the wizard tavern from the books, which is the entrance to Diagon Alley. So my interpretation on that is, hey, let's pumpkins because it's October and witchy wizard stuff, as well as, hey, let's butterbeer since obvious reasons. Butterbeer, for those of you that don't know, is basically just cream soda and butterscotch, or at least that's the kid-friendly version you get at the theme park. It's a little bit different in the books. Ultimately, we didn't wind up using butterbeer because it turns out when you reduce butterbeer into a syrup, it turns into basically a hard caramel, way harder than the butterscotch syrup. Also, it turns out that butterscotch syrup on hamburgers, as you could probably guess, is pretty disgusting. If you're interested in the recipe for the bread, it came out wrong this time, so I'm not going to give you the recipe for it this time. I won't bore you with the details of why it came out wrong. We make it plenty. We've made it a ton of times before. This just came out wrong today. You can snatch the correct version from a future video, but basically any hamburger bun recipe that you add either charcoal or cuttlefish ink to should do the trick. The pumpkin mayo, though. That was banging. Two thirds roasted pumpkin, one third mayo of your choice. Cheap, expensive, vegan, whatever kind of mayo you like. Oh, I love it! By the way, if you're into vegan stuff, I know it's only 2% of the population that's actually vegan, but impossible meat, charcoal for the buns, smart balance butter, and it's actually pretty easy to make a vegan version of this. Sounds like you're not gonna do it. That's fine. Smash burgers, I don't really care for personally. You guys voted on it, that's why we did it, but Smash burgers always feel like you're smashing all of the juice out of the burger. That's terrifying. And then it winds up being dry, so you have to kind of make up for that with cheese. You always see either smash burgers with a lot of cheese or a lot of mayo on it, because if you don't do that, then they turn out being way too dry naturally if you just eat the smash burger by itself. Luckily, we use plenty of pumpkin mayo to make up for it. The biggest takeaways from this at the end of the day, sauteed leeks and garlic and butter definitely belongs on a burger. These are actually pretty good. Butterscotch definitely does not belong on a burger. It's not right. Ugh. Ugh. And pumpkin mayo should have been a thing years ago.